What's going on everybody? It's Dom from Lens Pro to Go and Lens Rentals and welcome back to the channel. This week, we're gonna be talking about the Blackmagic Design Ursa Mini 12K. And this week's video is going to be a brief one because before I really dive into shooting on this thing and testing out how the whole 12K workflow thing goes, I wanted to take a chance to reach out to the community and ask what type of applications you can see 12K video being used for. Because just like you, I'm sitting here right now and sort of wondering what I would use such a large recording format for. So at the end of this video, I'm going to encourage you to leave some comments in the comment section like I always do. But this time, I want you to be specific about what you want to see tested from the Ursa 12K in next week's video because that one is going to have all the shooting and all the breakdown of the workflow in it. So anyways, with all of that out of the way, let's talk about the 12K video from the Ursa 12K on a technical level. All right, so for the build of this sensor, we have an entirely redesigned Super 35 sized sensor that's capable of a 12,288 by 6,480 pixels. Interestingly, this sensor is a non-Bayer sensor and Quick recap on what that means. The Bayer color filter array system is a way of arranging the red, blue, and green pixels. And this is the system that exists in like 95% of all CMOS sensors, which is like 95% of all video cameras. And there are certain exceptions to this, like Fuji cameras. But the Bayer system is still considered to be the best photo site array for capturing and rendering color in a digital video system. However, it does make sense that Blackmagic went with a non-traditional CMOS design to accommodate for that 12K resolution. Okay, one more nerdy thing before we move on, but if you're familiar with sensor design at all, you might understand that to get a ton of photo sites into a sensor, you have two options, make the sensor enormous or make those photo sites really, really small. And in most cases, what camera manufacturers do is the latter. This is usually referred to as pixel density, and it's pretty well understood at this point that a sensor with high pixel density, a lot of the times is not going to handle dynamic range very well. So right off the bat, considering those two things that we just talked about, the non-Bayer sensor and the high pixel density of this sensor, I'm a little concerned that it might not render color accurately or it might not retain details in my highlight and shadow areas. But this is a brand new camera from Blackmagic Design so I'm not having any hard expectations and I'm willing to be delightfully surprised. Okay, so let's talk about media briefly and how you record 12K video on this thing. So you may have seen this big honking external recorder on the back and thought, surely the only way it can record 12K is through that recorder. But that's not true. This thing can literally record 12K to an SD card, but don't get too excited because the only way Blackmagic Design was able to do that was by severely constricting the bit rates when using more normal media like that. And I haven't shot on this thing yet or looked at any footage from it, but I have a feeling that those compressions and bit rates are going to matter a lot. So that's the reason for the 12K recorder. This is going to allow me to insert a 2.5 inch external SSD, connect to the camera with a very secure locking USB-C, and now this addition is going to allow for much faster bit rates, which honestly I think is going to make all the difference. Okay, so say you didn't care about high bit rates or anything like that. Do I really need this recorder on the back of this thing to record 12K? Well, like I said, you don't, but keep in mind, these file sizes are enormous. I have a one terabyte SSD in here and at the lowest compression mode, that gives me 30 minutes of recording time. So I'd say yes, I would still use the external recorder unless you wanna be absolutely burning through cards. Okay, so last thing before I open this discussion up, let's talk about working with that 12K video in post. Of course, I should mention that the 12K video from the Ursa 12K can only be recorded in Blackmagic RAW. There's absolutely no option to shoot on ProRes like we see in every other Blackmagic camera, basically. Now, since I haven't dove into shooting, I obviously haven't dove into editing yet, but from what I've gathered in my research, it seems like the workflow is a lot better optimized in DaVinci than it is in Premiere. And that makes sense because it's Blackmagic's own software. And if you're planning on doing either of these options, either Premiere or DaVinci, you're gonna wanna download the latest version of Blackmagic RAW Player. And if you're using DaVinci, you're gonna wanna make sure that's updated to at least 16.3. Another quick note about DaVinci, the free version of DaVinci only allows you to work in 4K timelines. And in DaVinci Studio, that's when you can work with higher resolution projects. Okay, so considering everything we've talked about about this camera, from the build of the sensor to editing that 12K video in post, now it's time to open the discussion up to you. I want to start to think about some practical applications for 12K video, and honestly, I'm kind of coming up short. 
the number one thing I can think of is delivering an 8K. Just like when 4K came out, everyone was using it to deliver better 1080, and then 4K kind of became the standard, and then 8K gets rolled out, and now we're shooting in 8K to deliver in 4K. And so now, if you take the next logical step and you want to start delivering in 8K, then it kind of makes sense to take that extra jump up in resolution, and voila, 12K. But, is it too early to be talking about delivering videos in 8K? Probably, but let me know in the comment section. In that same vein, you could make the argument for resizing. Say you have a 4K project and you shot in 12K, you have an insane amount of freedom for resizing. And I'm pretty sure if my math is right, you could literally take four 4K frames from one 12K frame. So that's really all I got. That's why I want to encourage you to engage in the comment section below about what you want to see from the Ursa 12K in next week's video. So if you liked this video, hit that thumbs up button down below to let me know you liked it. And as I've said many other times in this video, drop a comment in the comment section and let me know what we should do with this thing next week. And also, if you have any questions or comments, etc. Also, if you're not already, subscribe to the channel. And if you are subscribed, you can hit that bell button down there to be notified whenever we post new content, which is every week. So take care, and we'll see you in the next one.